Well, hi there. Do you know what this is? This is one of the rarest, most beautiful, and most fascinating of all snakes. They are intelligent, thoughtful, and lightning fast. Not too long ago, one very nearly killed my friend Tyler Nolan. Oh, oh my God. Did you see how fast that was? These snakes can absolutely launch themselves. They are pit vipers, so they detect heat using L'Oreal heat pits. And they have enormous movable fangs that point nearly straight ahead during a strike. I'm really not sure how Tyler didn't get bitten. He was lucky that one was still so small. Because these are not small snakes. They get up over two meters in length, and they can strike about that same distance, and in the blink of an eye. Much faster than most elapids like cobras, coral snakes, and even mambas. Though a mamba can move faster over long distances. And if you get bitten, it's bad. How bad? Uh, we don't know. Ca catastrophic? They have one of the highest venom yields of any snake. And given what we know about the venom of the other members of their genus, protobothrops, you don't want any of it. Not to mention that there is no anti-venom for the venom of the Mangshan Viper, and outside of their small range in Hunan and Guangdong, China, nobody is going to even know what a Mangshan Pit Viper is, let alone what to do about the bite. The last thing that you want to hear at the ER is your doctor sneakily watching this video on double speed hoping to figure out what to do for you. But my experience with these snakes, limited as it is, has been delightful. Because I was first introduced to these snakes a few years ago when I visited my friend Tom Crutchfield with Dave Kaufman and Tyler Nolan. I'd never seen a Mansion Pit Viper in my life. But Tom's snakes were not only impressive and beautiful, but they were incredibly relaxed. So when I returned to Florida earlier this year, I had to see Tom's Mansion Pit Vipers once again. They were burned on my memory. So are these massive, beautiful, lightning fast, deadly snakes Good pets? And is the Mangshan Pit Viper the best pet snake for you? Obviously, to find out, we're gonna have to give the Mangshan Pit Viper a score based on our five categories, which are handleability, care, hardiness, availability, and upfront costs. Today's video is sponsored by Ridge, who you probably know from the amazing Ridge Wallet, but maybe the Ridge Wallet is just a little too, a little too subtle for you. Well, now you can go Hyper Lime! Woo! This is the brightest color in the world. Look at this, look at this. You will never, ever, ever lose your Ridge wallet again. Never, ever. This could be in outer space. You would know exactly where that wallet is. Hyper Lime, and you can couple your Hyper Lime with the key case for the daily driver. You could couple it with the Ridge pen, which is bolt action and totally rad. I've loved this thing. Of course, I haven't had one in Hyper Lime, and I lost mine for a long time. Wouldn't have lost it if it was Hyper Lime. You could even get all three of them together for the everyday carry that you would never ever lose in your life because it's a Hyper Lime. And here's a big bottle, Hyper Lime. Hat, Hyper Lime, your whole life could be Hyper Lime. And it would be just like this moment. If you want to get your own Hyper Lime Ridge products, or really in any color at all, Go to our link, ridge.com slash Clint. Use promo code Clint to save 10%. That's ridge.com slash Clint, promo code Clint. And here's one of the best things. You can have your Hyper Lime Ridge or any Ridge product for 99 days. And if you decide, you know, it's not for you, you can send it right back, get a full refund. But uh, <laughs> you'll never find your other wallet again. All right, let's get back to those cryptic vipers. When it comes to handleability, it's really difficult to describe this. When I saw them last, I had just been at the complete mercy of a large adult crocodile monitor who licked my face and yawned right by my neck. One bite could have easily killed me, and yet they will eat out of Tom's hands with the greatest of care. And then we went to see his mansion pit vipers. Before I get into the handling of these snakes, I want to just take a minute to take you with me to watch Tom interact with and feed these amazing snakes. Hey, May May, she's waiting for food too. That's a big bird. Now see how she got the bird, not me? Yeah. She gets it. Wow. Huh, you know what I mean? Now she could have bit my hand, struck out any time she wanted to. I couldn't have stopped it or gotten away moving forward mm -hmm. like that. Oh yeah. And with the weight of this, but she's not. You see her target, the quail. Mm-hmm. 
Absolutely. Now this one definitely wants to eat. It definitely smells the food. See how it's not trying to buy? Yeah. And we don't even work with these at all. So but if I open this a little further? You can, but I'm not going to do this long anyway. But just give you an idea of those. See what I mean? See how I manipulated away from my hand? If I wanted to work with this for a very short time, it would be the same. And when I put it back, there's not going. I'm not going to drop the tail so it flaps against the side and scares the shit out of it. I'm not going to poke the tail. I'm going to just stand here and let it, or let her crawl in. This is a female. Watch out for the other nosy ones. Yeah, they all want to eat. They're not trying to bite though or nothing. They just want to eat. See how she's not trying to snatch her tail away from me? You see this? That makes, yes. that makes a lot of difference. All the difference in the world. You know, yep. no, no part of this handling experience was unpleasant for the snake, and it'll remember yes. that. It will. And it'll let me do that next time and even more if I want to. And if I wanted to come out here and every day and do it pretty soon, it wouldn't care if I did it at all. Believe it? Oh, I not. believe it. See? It still got its tail out here. Now, normally, if you touch the tail of a moving snake, it's going to get real. But if I do it from the bottom, it's totally different than doing it from the top. Mm -hmm. No predator carefully scoops them from below. And the tactile feeling they get from below is totally different from the top. The snails are different. They, the way that they express it is it's great danger from the top. Oh, uh, absolutely. It's not danger at all from the bottom because nothing bothers them from the bottom. Isn't that amazing? Obviously, these are not mean, nasty monsters that want nothing more than to bite you. They don't. The truth is that no venomous snake on the entire planet will survive a fight with a human that is determined to kill it. They don't want to fight you. And a surprising reality about venomous snakes is that behaviorally, they're just like non-venomous snakes. Some are more likely to bite than others. They're only going to bite if they think they're getting food and make a mistake. These snakes eat rodents as they run down game trails. That means that they have to make quick decisions about food, and quick decisions are not always the best. Or if they feel threatened. Just like with other snakes, venomous snakes can be trained to know when they're getting food and when they're not. Target training or tap training are both great options for this. And they can also learn that humans are not a threat. It is honestly amazing to me how quickly a snake, even a wild snake, assesses that a human is not a threat from a single interaction, just by how you touch them or how you behave around them. Here at Clint's Reptile Room, we've been preparing for our grand opening, and we've been doing a lot of construction right here in the room. That had my baby bull snake, Skeletor, very nervous. She was rattling and hissing and hyper-focused on anyone that came near her. She was showing all of the signs of a snake that might bite you. But when I scooped her up from below, she instantly relaxed completely. No predator would treat a snake this way. And even wild snakes will relax when handled like that. But it amazed me that not only did she not become more agitated, but my gentle touch actually relaxed her from a state of high agitation. Mangshan pit vipers are no different. I've been bitten by very few snakes in my life. I've been bitten by more people, but I have been bitten. I've made only a few mistakes, but if one of them had been with a Mangshan pit viper, I probably wouldn't be here to tell the story. So I'm giving them a zero out of five for handleability. They can be handled. With proper tools, you can do so with a much lower chance of an accident. They are not aggressive by nature. They are big, which makes it hard to handle them even with proper tools. That strike zone, it, it's just too far. It's lightning fast. And if you're envenomated, I don't love your chances of survival. This isn't the first zero that I have given to a venomous snake. And though this was the hardest one for me to declare as a zero, I think it's well deserved. Not because of the way that they behave, but rather because of their capabilities if you make a mistake. And mistakes do happen. Maybe only once with these. 
When it comes to care, we give the Mansion Pit Viper a score of 2 out of 5. I want to stress, with the greatest amount of stress possible, do not buy one of these snakes if it is wild caught. It will be much more difficult to keep a wild caught snake alive, and that really has nothing to do with why I'm being so emphatic about this. We'll get to that when we talk about availability. But assuming that you get a captive bred mansion pit viper, then care should be fairly typical for a large ground dwelling tropical forest snake. And I'm gonna go ahead and say that if you don't know what that means, probably don't get a mansion pit viper. This is not the way that you wanna get your feet wet with exotic snakes. But it means that they do well with a good basking spot and cooler refuges, they need some humidity, for really specific numbers for both temperature and humidity, I would recommend speaking to the breeder directly. This is an exceedingly rare snake, so we honestly don't know too much about the exact specifics of their care. Speaking to one of the few people that has bred these snakes would be a very good place to start. These snakes tend to be good eaters. In the wild, they eat insects, mammals, and frogs, though they seem to enjoy the occasional bird as well in captivity, and I'd be shocked to discover that they're any different in the wild. So far, this all seems like typical snake stuff. So why a two? Uh, oh my! These snakes are basically the Bushmasters of China. In fact, like Bushmasters, they're an egg-laying pit viper, which most pit vipers are not. They're also huge, lightning fast, deadly, and generally calm as cucumbers. They even look a little bit like cucumbers. But you're gonna need to get into that enclosure to clean up, to feed, and to check on the well-being of that snake. I have watched Tyler's video so many times. He had bite gloves on. He was doing some maintenance seemingly after a shed. Sheds usually involve a poop. Snakes like to get a clean start after a shed. And Tyler looks like he's actively looking for the snake. They have an incredible camouflage, you know. Tyler does some things with snakes that I would generally not recommend. But what he was doing that day is something that every Mansion Pit Viper owner needs to do from time to time. And it almost cost him his life. And look how fast the snake bolted back into the enclosure at the end. Oh my god, dude. Oh, that's a fucking heart stopper right there. That is so serious. Pardon my French. This was just a young one with a comparatively short strike range. Six months later and that snake would have hit Tyler right in the chest. I would and do recommend using a trap box, but these aren't mambas. These are sit and wait ambush predators. They aren't gonna spend much time in a box. They're gonna be sitting motionless, somewhere that they think a small mammal might pass by, relying on their incredible camouflage. It might be hard to get them into a box. My recommendation would be a divider that can be inserted from the outside so that you can clean the enclosure one side at a time. Hopefully you are 100% confident that you know which side the snake is actually on. These snakes are not aggressive. Like a Bushmaster, they are uninclined to bite. But if you put yourself in a position where it could happen and the snake tries, well, there is probably no snake on the planet more capable of making that a reality. And the next thing you know, you're hearing the Clint's Reptiles intro playing in the corner of the ER. I'd like to just say thank you really quickly to our patrons on Patreon who made this trip down to Florida to see these amazing snakes, as well as the croc monitors, and at least one more really cool thing down at Tom Crutchfield's Possible. Uh, you know, we have so many capabilities because of your support, and we are so grateful, and we hope that some of the things that we contribute back, including videos like this, but also our extra Patreon extras videos every week, and, and the other features that we have for you, helps show you a little bit how grateful we are. If you want to support us doing things like this in the future, or just want to see some of these bonuses we have for our rad fans and stinking rad fans, please consider checking out our Patreon. As far as I know, these snakes are fairly hardy in captivity. I'm giving them a four out of five for hardiness. That said, these are pretty much only kept by zoos and expert reptile keepers. So it's not all that surprising that they tend to do well. Again, this applies only to captive bred individuals. I would say that you would need to be an expert to keep a wild caught import alive as it's likely to come to you in abysmal condition. And even then I wouldn't bet on the snake to survive. But if yours is captive bred, uh, mostly just be careful about hydration and proper temperatures. 
It's really your hardiness that I'm most concerned about. When it comes to availability, we give the Mansion Pit Viper a score of 1 out of 5. That said, 1 out of 5 is higher than you might expect given their status in the wild. This is an endangered species with a total population estimated to be under 500 individuals, though being such a cryptic snake, estimates are very difficult to calculate. The reality is that their range is very small and shrinking. They're also harvested quite extensively for food, leather, and as pets. This is why I say do not get one from the wild. And don't take someone at their word that they have a captive bred baby. Check the receipts. The pet trade could actually drive these to extinction. And it could also be their salvation. The truth is that like axolotls and many other species, the day may come in the not so distant future where there are no Mansion vipers alive in the wild. Though hunting can drive some species to extinction, habitat destruction is the most extreme danger to the survival of species generally. There may be no suitable habitat for Mansion vipers one day. And then they will only exist in the invisible ark. A few zoos and a large number of private keepers. And while I don't think that Mansion Pit Vipers should become as common as axolotls, I actually have a strange recommendation here. First, uh, pro probably don't get a Mansion Pit Viper. It's a terrible idea. It's a super cool snake, but so are super dwarf free ticks and false water cobras. Honestly, you will probably impress more people coming out with an eight foot snake that looks like a cobra and has cobra in its name draped over your shoulders than you will with a six foot murder missile that looks like a pile of moss and that they've never heard of. Honestly, this is a much worse idea even than getting something like a rattlesnake. At least in the United States, your doctor will know what that is and will have antivenin. But if you are an expert reptile keeper that already keeps snakes that will kill you super dead and you are experienced breeding snakes, well, maybe consider Mangshan pit vipers. We need to preserve as much variation as we can in this species. A large captive population might be the best chance for these snakes, but be very careful where you get them and be very careful with them. You're no good to us dead. But if this isn't you, the fact that you are unlikely to find them at most pet shops or expos is hardly a problem at all. This is just a really bad idea. When it comes to upfront costs, we give the Mangshan pit viper a score of two out of five. The snake is gonna cost thousands of dollars. And that's great. This is an abysmal impulse buy. And I would only recommend getting these if you're going to get at least a pair. Insanely venomous snakes are generally not as expensive as they would be if they weren't so venomous. There just aren't nearly as many potential buyers for Mangshan vipers as there are for, say, ball pythons. And thank goodness for that. But it means that the demand, while it still may be high, simply can't be as high because most people, even people that keep snakes, don't want deadly snakes in their homes. So this snake will cost thousands, but maybe not as many thousands as you would think. After that, your biggest financial expense may come in terms of licensing, though this may be a cost more in terms of time than money. I would recommend a very large and exceedingly secure enclosure with a divider. You may need to build this yourself, but I'm pretty sure Toad Ranch could hook you up. They can do anything really. Substrate, bowls, heating, hides, decor, and other things will not cost too much. So the biggest expense will probably just be the snake. Though setting aside a hundred grand or so for medical bills and funeral expenses might not be a bad idea. Again, this is a very docile snake. They don't want any problems. But if you are interacting with it regularly, mistakes can happen. And this situation can go sideways, or in this case, right at you, faster than almost any other. And this is why, overall, we give the Mansion Pit Viper a score of 1.8 out of 5, which is a better score than children and, and Bushmasters, but a little worse than Black Mambas. Though, this is in many ways a better idea than a Black Mamba. Sort of like a black bear is a better idea than a polar bear. Or jumping off of your roof is a better idea than jumping off of an air traffic control tower. Generally, I would say that a Mansion Pit Viper is a terrible idea, full stop. But if you are an experienced keeper and breeder of extremely deadly snakes, then the Mansion Pit Viper might be the perfect next deadly snake for you to work with. But it is not a good pet. As always, like and subscribe, and we hope to see you real soon. And please follow Tom Crutchfield, we'll have links in the description.